Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Sunday, April 3rd, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is part two, everyone. This is my website, www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Check out the poll there. I'm going to keep moving on. Uh, this article that we have up first is U.S. economy showing real strength, says Barry Satoro. It says U.S. President Barry Satoro delivers marks or delivered marks at a UPS shipping facility in Landover. And uh, he said that the U.S. economy was showing signs of, quote, real strength. Then I came across this article. It says Economic News Brief for April 2011. This is the insight for uh, food service professional. But it says the overview of the economy appears on the rebound, but increasing food prices are a concern. Talking about inflation. As unemployment decreases, consumer confidence is improving. The boost in optimism is tied to increased consumer spending and greater demand for food service. It says economists expect 2011 to be a strong year for the food service industry with record sales. However, experts believe that increasing food prices will put pressure on the margins. And it says here that consumers are beginning to spend more freely. Data goes down here and it says, uh, according to the United Nations Food and Agricultural organization food prices hit record levels in January. It says food companies, retailers, and manufacturers are warning consumers about rising prices. In January, the U.S. government reported that the consumer prices were slightly higher than expected, largely the result of rising food and gas prices. January's CPI or consumer price index rose 0.4 percent, while economists had anticipated a 0.3 gain. And it goes down here and it says non-alcoholic beverages rose 1.5 percent as the indices for carbonated drinks and coffee increased sharply. The fruits and vegetable index increased 1.3 and with the index for fresh vegetables up 2 percent. The index for meat, poultry, fish, and eggs increased almost 1 percent and the index for cereals and bakery products increased almost 1 percent. And we have this property tax on the way within a year and this is of course for Ireland. The government has been ordered by the EU and IMF to impose a property tax on all homeowners within a year. It says a controversial annual tax is expected to be announced in December's budget, even though it was not in the program for the government. Oops, sorry, we forgot to include that. It said the imposition of the tax and the precise timeline for its rollout are key requirements for Ireland to avail of the EU IMF bailout package of $85 billion. So... And it says here, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease to reach epidemic status in the U.S. United States could soon be faced with an epidemic of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, one of the major contributing factors of chronic liver disease, CLD. And it says the American Association for the Advancement of Science reported on Saturday. It says if the current rates of obesity and diabetes continue for another two decades, i.e. the eugenics continues, the prevalence of NAFLD in the U.S. is expected to increase by 50% in 2030. So I guess we won't have to worry about the big, huge population uh, boom or growth by 2050, right? Arizona Medicaid considers tax on smokers and the obese. And then rationing of health services across Europe is inevitable, says the cost of health care across Europe is rising faster than government's ability to fund it, according to a report by the Economist Intelligence Unit. The report identified seven key trends that will shape health care over the next two decades. And it says health spending will continue to rise due to inflation, but also because governments realize better po uh, public health boosts economic growth. So, And uh, it goes on there and it says, it predicts that GPs or general practitioners, sorry here, I'm trying to get this highlighted for you, will become ever more important as, quote, gatekeepers, that's the rationers word, uh, to the wider health system in European countries as a coordinators or rationers of treatment for patients with multiple long-term conditions. So says A2 veterans, caregivers, slow the implementation of a law signed by U.S. President or dictator Barry Satoro last year to provide aid for caregivers of U.S. war veterans has been slow or se severely limited. Caregivers to U.S. vets thus do not receive the benefits promised to them by law. A Press TV correspondent reports the Department of VA missed a, a January 31st deadline to kick off the so-called Caregivers and Veterans Omnibus Health Service Act program would have provided financial assistance, health care, and counseling to qualified veterans. And uh, here we go. We've become a nation of takers, not makers. And, of course, they're going to blame this on what the average American person who uh, pays, you know, most of their life taxes and just wants to be able to see some of that, right? But no, you have corporations that profit off this corporatist system because we have a government, and they're the ones that are taking and taking and taking, right? It says uh, more Americans work for the government than in manufacturing, farming, fishery, forestry, mining, and utilities combined. That's because, well, they killed our, basically these globalists have killed our manufacturing industry. 
And so who are you going to work for? The government. And uh, now they're cutting jobs, so people are starting to squirm. It says Canada watches as democracy erode. Said on Friday, the min minority Stephen Harper government fell on confidence motion by 156, 145 vote. Speaking to the motion, opposition leader Michael attacked the government for disrespecting Canadian democracy and treating Parliament with contempt. Then we have Canadian Liberals propose 8.5 billion in spending programs over two years. And so who are some of the takers? Well, well, it was these people, right? Foreign banks tap Fed's secret lifeline most at crisis peak. And what was the big story about this, guys? Was that what? Oh, we can't list the banks that are receiving these loans. Why? Well, because they're foreign banks. And if the American people knew that, well, as they were getting kicked out of their house, foreign banks were getting loans from U.S. taxpayers, they would be kind of pissed. So they didn't tell them and they said, what? Oh, national security or um, what is it? Uh, financial security and discretion, right? That's what it was all about, right? So a bunch of BS. And we have this exclusive Barclays making up to uh, 340 pounds profit on food price speculation. High street customers could be subsidizing the role of Barclays Capital and driving up global food prices and leaving millions Facing hunger and malnutrition, says campaign group Tom Levitt reports. And uh, it goes on here that as much as 340 million pounds a year in profit through gambling on the price of key commodity crops like coffee, sugar, and wheat, the ecologist has learned. So you can go in there and check that out, talking about creating funds to allow investors to speculate on the price of food. And it uh, says here, Goldman Sachs almost doubles blank fine pay package to $19 billion for 2010. And then we have TransOcean gives bonuses after Gulf of Mexico BP spill. U.S. Southwest Airlines takes part of fleet out of service following accident. Southwest Airlines took part of its fleet out of service on Saturday after a plane blew its top and made an emergency landing. And pressure mounts on Gillard over tax. Prime Minister uh, Julia Gillard is coming under increased pressure to release the cost details of the government's proposed carbon tax. The push is coming from within the Labor Party with uh, MPs calling for Ms. Gillard to address the issue on compensation and cost of living. Labor has been taking a political hit after Treasury modeling showed household bills could rise by 863 U.S. or I'm sorry, Aussies a year. And it uh, says the official minute release on Friday through an opposition freedom of information request estimated how a $30 a ton carbon price would affect living costs if calculated that Australians would pay $600 or more for utilities and food. If, if petrol were included in the carbon price, household bills would rise by $863. So uh, most of my li links are usually posted unless I don't have room or for some reason uh, I just lose them and I have uh, technical issues. So... So another eugenics meeting in Bangkok countries urged at Bangkok meet to carry out pledges on climate change. So that means to carry out your pledge on killing people, depopulation. The European Union on Sunday urged governments to carry out pledges on mitigating global warming. Global warming. Hmm. We just had the coldest winter hmm. made at least the last year's. UN ministerial climate change meeting at a climate change meeting kicked off here in Bangkok. And because this global warming is such a sham and the people are pretty much waking up to that fact, they have to change the name to climate change because it pretty much infers anything uh, that happens in the climate due to nature is uh, man's fault. Um, now, what I, th this is weird because I kind of came to this realization while I was hiking with my buddy, and that is... There is man-made climate change, and it's called weather modification. So it's, it's, this is pretty funny because they're spraying us on a daily basis pretty much globally. I don't know if they're spraying in the Arctic or the, you know, Antarctica or the North Pole, but um, there's been reports on spraying, aerial spraying um, pretty much in every country. So they're spraying everywhere. And um, what it's doing is it's heating up the ionosphere along with what they're doing with the towers and shooting uh, energy up there into the ionosphere and uh, they can't they're not only creating earthquakes and uh, creating rain but they're also uh, fluctuating the temperature and what they're doing is is making it warmer so in making it warmer they're causing the global warming and in causing the global warming you'll see eventually they've actually already talked about this about geoengineering the planet in order to combat climate change well if they're if they're changing the climate man is 
by manipulating the weather, i.e., weather modification, then how how are then they're, how are they going to be able to come in and spray in order to stop what they're doing because of the spraying? How is their spraying, you know what I'm saying, going to stop the warming if the spraying causes the warming? You see, that's the conclusion that I've come to, and that's how insane it sounds when you try to like just think about it. But either way, I'm going to move on here. You could try to throw that and toss that around in your mind when you're by yourself because it's it is it's it's just complete it's ridiculous and it makes no sense whatsoever but the slaves i don't know i think they're starting to wake up but there's still plenty of them out there that are for this eco-fascist movement and now look at this extra cold winters in northeastern north america and northeastern asia warm water off continents eastern coast to blame and it's a pretty cool article it actually goes on and explains how the warm waters in the gulf and the gulf stream are actually caused uh uh, uh, colder temperatures in the northeast United States and warmer temperatures, um, I believe in Europe was it? So, but uh, yeah, I mean you can go down here, and, but it doesn't mention anything about global warming or climate change. So it's just a natural occurrence. Uh, moving on here, John Gibbons, ex-Irish Times eco-fascist, joins the sovereign independent in the war against Al Gore's global warming inconvenient lies. And he said that they're proud to welcome his latest member of his dedicated staff in the fight against the New World Order in the shape of John Gibbons, ex of the Irish Times. So he is not on board anymore. Climate change and new eugenics. So there you go. The London Telegraph. So um, there you go. Um, this that headline, that headline pretty much covers it right there. Survey mobile banking services, popular mobile phone users in China. And this is a, I don't think it's going to be a good thing for Chinese because I don't think most of them have credit at all. Um, but they had an issue up in Sweden or Norway, one of those Scandinavian countries where uh, a lot of people were running into debt problems because they had such easy access to these little uh, quick uh, uh, credit, like pretty much like a, you can swap your uh, tele your cell phone for um, you know you know buy things and like and stuff like that. So um, th I guess there was a lot of young people using that and they were actually getting into a lot of debt because it was so easy to get. So and I was told uh, from someone that was a student over in China that most Chinese people actually pay with cash. And um, we're going to move on here to genetically modified cows produce human milk. Scientists have created genetically modified cattle that produce human milk in a bid to make cows more uh, nutritious. Scientists have successfully introduced human genes into 300 dairy cows that produce milk with the same properties as human breast milk. What? Human milk contains high qualities of key nutrients that help uh, to boost the immune system of babies and reduce the risk of infections. So, you know what? Instead of just drinking real freaking milk from a cow, unpasteurized, unhomogenized, without growth hormones, um, without antibiotics, uh, no, they're going to just modify and gen you know genetically modify, clone, and, and all this other crap. And then they're going to outlaw it and make it so difficult to drink milk that people have been drinking for for thousands of years. It's ridiculous, man. Baby formulas contain fungal formula, uh, hormones, so infant formula and solid. So this is what you get, right? So instead of just drinking breast milk, you get this, and then what do you get? You get melamine, you get fluoride, you get fungal hormones for for trying to uh, substitute it for the n real thing, right? More than 8 million East Africans in need of food aid due to drought, uh, says UN export, experts. So, And then we have UN chief calls for greater awareness of autism. Hmm, so they care about autism. Okay. Then we have multiple studies link autism to mercury, which is still present in most flu vaccines. Autism fears measles spike among Minnesota Somalis. Health officials struggling to contain a measles outbreak that's hard hit in Minneapolis' large Somali community are running into resistance from parents who fear the vaccine could give their children autism. And this is what you need to know, guys. Amid the outbreak, here comes the disinfo. Here comes the propaganda. Amid the outbreak, a now discredited British researcher who claimed that there was a link between uh, vaccines and autism has been meeting with local Somalis. <gasps> The infections come as autism concerns have surged over an apparent rise in the cases in Minnesota's Somali community, the largest in the U.S. officials. Uh, it says the largest in the U.S. officials, though, haven't determined if that's really happening. Of course they're not going to admit it. It's eugenics, right? And it's probably from what? Because they trusted the government and they took the vaccines. Now they have autism and now they're scared because they're uh, coming back with the, uh, with the vaccines, Adam. Cell phone radiation may alter your brain. But, of course, the article says that uh, there's no way to show whether it has any kind of negative uh, effect, like radiation could be good for you, like Ann Coulter said. Uh, this is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.